Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 7 for my basic RPG series. Now, really quickly before we get into the video, I, wa I just wanted to mention that I just put my game Grain War on Steam Greenlight. So, check the description for a link. You can go vote. It's already, I've only had it up for like 6 hours, I think, and we're already 70-something percent of the way to the top 100. So it wouldn't be surprising if I got greenlit in a single day, uh, which would be just crazy to me. But people seem to really like it, so check out the link in the description. In today's video, we're going to uh, add gamepad input to our game. I have a basic Xbox 360 controller here. It's a wired one. You can get these for like, uh, I think if you're a Prime member for like $25 or $30 on Amazon. And I've just got it plugged into my computer. You can see it's got the player one light lit there. So we know that that is plugged in and should be working. Now the benefit of using a script like we did in our game to get the input is that we can make sure that like I said, we only have to change this in one place now. So we can update this script so that it uh, works for gamepad input as well, and we only have to do it in one place. So the first thing we need to do, let's say check for gamepad input. The first thing we need to do is check to make sure that a gamepad is connected. And there's a function for that that we can use. We can say if gamepad is connected, okay? And this function takes one argument, and the argument is the device. Now, I know what that means, but you may not know what that means, and I want to teach you guys how you can kind of teach yourselves, right? So we're going to look at GameMaker's documentation. So uh, if you come and you use your middle mouse button and click on GamePad is Connected, it's going to open up. GameMaker Studio's help file and it's going to have your function right up here at the top. GamePad is connected and then it says num for number. And that is for the device, the argument is the device and that means which GamePad slot to check. But you still might not know exactly what that means so let's read the description here. Oh, and you can also see the return value of this function. Now when a function is called it basically turns into something. And so this one turns into what's called a boolean, which means either true or false, or a zero or a one. So let's read the description here. It says the function will return, remember what return means? It just means turn into basically, whether a gamepad is connected to a given slot, returns true or not, returns false. You would normally use this function in conjunction with gamepad get device count function to get the correct number of available gamepads and or gamepad slots. Note that there may be a slight delay between the user connecting the gamepad and GameMaker Studio detecting it as being connected, especially the case when dealing with Bluetooth connected controllers. Okay, so that's helpful. Now, what we can do is the gamepad, you can look down here, they even have a little example for you. So they say gamepad get number or var gamepad number equals gamepad get device count. So that's getting the number of gamepads that are connected <clears throat> or the number of gamepads that are available. And then it's cycling through each of those and adding each gamepad in with gamepad is connected to make sure that they're if there is one connected. What we need to know though is right up here, which just means it's the gamepad slot. So if we close out of here, for the because in programming we often start counting with zero, the first gamepad slot, right? Like we're in slot number one right here on our light that's lit up. The first slot is actually slot zero. Okay, so if gamepad is connected zero, which is the first gamepad, then what do we do? Well, we need to get the input from the gamepad and we need to assign it to these variables like we did before. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do right key is equal to gamepad. Let's see, gamepad axis. I can't, I can't, it's so frustrating when GameMaker does this. I can't see up there, and it's kind of annoying. Oh, gamepad axis. Let's see. Gamepad get axis. Okay, this is a perfect example of when you could use, because the thing up there isn't showing up and I can't see what, oh, maybe I can bring this down here a bit. There we go. There we go, gamepad access value. That's the one that I needed. But that's a perfect example of what you can, when you can use um, the documentation. If I middle click on this, and it keeps expanding it too wide. You can see I get all these functions over here on the left-hand side that I can use. Gamepad button check, gamepad check pressed, button check pressed. And if I click on gamepad input up here, it gives me this whole huge uh, thing of information about the different gamepad buttons. And we're actually going to use this in just a second. So, but first I'm going to close out of it. So gamepad access value. Okay, we're going to do a parentheses. We need to pass in the device again. Well, that's zero, like we set up here. It's the same as the one up here. And then we need to pass in an access index. So let's find out what an access index is by middle clicking on this function. And you can see an access index is the access index to check C constants list. So that sounds like a good thing because we're using this to get the the gamepad axis of the analog stick so we can check the axis of the analog stick so uh, C con constants list let's come into here okay so if we got this nice little image down here we're showing that the analog stick on the left is GP and the horizontal one I don't know why they have this upside down but anyways the horizontal one on the left is GP axis LH, which stands, I'm assuming, for gamepad access left horizontal, right? GP access LH. So let's minimize the documentation and pass in GP, oops, GP access LH, okay? Gamepad get access value. The problem is that our function here, let's middle click on it again and open up our documentation. The problem is, is that this function returns a real, which means it returns a number. And that number is not just a true or false, it could be a big number. But let's look here in our description, it says you can use this function to get the value of different axis from a given gamepad. The return value will be between negative 1 and 1 for the available horizontal and vertical axis. Yeah, but that's depending on, we're doing horizontal. So it's gonna be negative one or, or one in between there. So it could be any value in between. It could be zero, it could be 0 0.25, it could be negative 0.75, you know, it could be any value in between negative one and one. But we only want it to trigger the right key or to set this right key to true if they're moving their axe, if they're moving their gamepad to the right, well, technically this is my right, but uh, so only if they're moving it to the right. So what we need to do is check to see if this return value, because to the right is going to be one. We need to check to see if it's greater than something. So we're going to do if it's greater than or equal to 0.5. Okay. That means you also have to do a little bit. Of, you can't just do greater than zero because you want a little bit of a dead zone. So this is this is creating a little bit of a dead zone on our on our gamepad axis. So the right key is now equal to gamepad axis value zero. Gamepad axis left horizontal is greater than or equal to 0.5. If this right here 
we can put parentheses around it just to make it even more obvious. If this statement is true, then our right key will be equal to true or one. If this statement is false, then our right key will be equal to zero or false. Okay, let's do the left key right afterwards. Right here. And instead of doing greater than or equal to 0.5, let's do less than or equal to negative 0.5 because this is moving left and you'll want to make sure to change this to left as well. I copied and pasted that, but make sure you change this to left as well. But this is still right here, the left horizontal axis, LH, right? Now we're going to do a mini challenge, and this is going to be a little bit harder than some of my other mini challenges, but that's okay. What I want you to do is uh, pause the video, and then I want you to do up and down, and get the axis value, and you're going to want to remember to do the vertical axis this time instead of the horizontal axis. So try and do uh, your LH or your LV, which will be for the vertical axis. You can pause the video right now. Okay, great job. Hopefully you got that done. I'm just going to copy these down like this. Control C, Control V, and I'm going to change this one to the down key, and this one to the up key. Now I chose that because this is already positive, which is down, and this is already negative, which is up. Now we just need to change this from left horizontal to left vertical on both of these. Press the green check mark and test the game and run it. Hopefully we don't get any error messages. No, it looks good. Now you can see I am able to move my character using the analog stick. Which is pretty cool. But he still only moves in exactly eight directions. He doesn't move, like you don't have, you can't move in between the diagonals. You can only move at the diagonals. I can show you how to make it 360 movement as well. So let's do that real quick. What we can do for 360 degree movement is if we come into our move state, you can see right here where we're getting the x-axis and the y-axis. What we can do is if we just override the x-axis and the y-axis to be the gamepad input instead of the right key, left key, and down key like this, then uh, this is going to start working. But we're going to want to first change these to where they're instance variables so that we can access them inside of this script. Because right now, or inside of the get input script, because right now they're local variables. So let's make our x axis and y axis instance variables. So I'm going to do x axis equals zero y axis equals zero. Now our x axis and y axis are now instance variables. They can be um, accessed <laughs> inside of uh, the input script now. So we can actually copy this right here where it says get the axis. I'm just going to press control x to remove this from there and middle click on the get input. That opens up the get input script right here and we're going to put in X axis and Y axis right here. Now, if we want to get the X axis and the Y axis for our character, we don't actually have to do these anymore the way we did that. Okay? What we can do is we can just do, um, let's not get rid of that. We've got, we've got our gamepad axis for the horizontal. So we, we only need to keep one of each one. We need to keep one of the vertical and one of the horizontal. And you can take off the greater than or equal to now. Because we're going to actually use the value that it passes into us. So we'll just do x axis and y axis right here. OK. 
Okay. We've got an extra parenthesis right there. That's why I'm getting the red over here. So we've got extra parentheses. So now we've got gamepad get access left horizontal and gamepad get access right uh, vertical, left vertical. So now we're getting the exact access value from these functions. And if we run our game right now, you'll see uh, when we move, we can move exactly, exactly in any direction like this. The problem with this is that we've got dead zone. And so our character moves even when we're not moving. Or we don't have a dead zone. Because so on analog sticks, they're always feeding values in. And these values might be tiny, like, uh, you know, 0 0.001 or 0 0.009 or negative 0 0.09 or something. They're tiny values. And you don't want that to pass into the game and move your character because, honestly, uh, you only want to move the character when they actually give the give it quite a bit of movement, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set a dead zone. So gamepad uh, set axis. Let's see. It's doing that thing again where I can't see it set axis dead zone right there we're gonna do device which is zero and we're gonna do a dead zone and I'm gonna do a dead zone of 0.35 you wanna do something um, sometimes 0.5 seems to work pretty good uh, we'll probably mess around with this to try and get this perfect basically you just don't want it to move if you're not moving right And this seems to work pretty good. We can move it exactly any angle now using the gamepad. And if we stop, we don't we don't keep moving because we've set a dead zone on our uh, on our analog stick so that it doesn't read even the tiny values anymore. Basically, if the value is less than 0.35, it's going to pretend that it's zero. So there you go. That's how you can add game game put into your um, or gamepad input into your game. Now this will work still for your normal keyboard input. So if you don't have a gamepad plugged in, uh, this will automatically continue to work with the keyboard. So you have to actually unplug the gamepad. But then you can see now that I've unplugged the gamepad, it still works with the keyboard input. I'm not using the gamepad anymore. So it will work for both keyboard and gamepad input just in case you don't have a gamepad or you don't want to use a gamepad. Uh, but that gives you a lot of information there. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. I'm excited for next week because we're going to start into different uh, like a dash state and stuff like that. I just had to get this set up with the X axis and Y axis because that is a better way of handling your input and rolling and stuff like that or dashing. I don't want to do rolling, I'm going to do dashing. So it's basically the same thing, it's just dashing is going to look cooler and kind of teleport. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure and like this video and just a quick reminder, if you want to check out my game on Steam Greenlight, there's a link in the description below. So thank you guys so much and I will talk to you guys later.